Welcome to another episode of Message from Mom, where we're busting the myth that mothers-in-law aren't necessarily monsters-in-law. And I'm joined by my lovely co-hosts, who happen to be my daughters-in-law. So to the left of me is Kelly. Hi, I'm Kelly. I'm married to Beth's oldest son, Alex. And to the right of me is Chelsea. Hi, I'm Chelsea. I'm married to Beth's middle son, Andrew. And we, we got that right on the first take. So yeah, we did. No, no tongue tied Yay. here. <laughs> <laughs> Yay for us. So before we get started on this week's episode, we're going to raise a toast because we do this every episode because we know that you don't necessarily need to be a blood relative to love your relative. So cheers, ladies. Cheers. To another cheers. episode. Cheers. Oh, boy. Hmm. And this is really kind of a hot topic that we're tackling today. Some of our episodes are very light and bright and fun and personal experiences. And perhaps we're going to bring our personal experiences into today's episode. Mm -hmm. But I uh, think this is a very fascinating topic. And it is really the over-medication of America. Because here is a startling statistic, and I will just read this, that... The United States takes the most prescription drugs with a national average of each person spending around $1,200 a year. So that really That's stuck wild. with me. Isn't that crazy? It's mm -hmm. crazy. It's crazy that the United States is the most yeah. medicated country in the world. And so I just thought we would just take a little bit of a deep dive into that. And, and also since I am 65, so I was very curious. So here's another statistic. I was very curious as to what the average prescription that a 65 year old takes. And it says older adults are also more likely than younger counterparts to be taking multiple prescription medications. Mm -hmm. and it said more than half of adults 65 and older. So that's 54% report taking four or more prescription drugs, mm -hmm. which is crazy. And so they call that polypharmacy when you have more than one prescription drug oh, really? in play. Okay. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Which I thought that was interesting. So anyway, so I'm just going to throw those statistics out and we can just kick it off because um, it, it really has also come to my attention that 30 years ago, we were not taking nearly as many prescription mm -hmm. drugs as we are today. So, and mm -hmm. also I do know that big pharma um, is a machine. Yeah. And yeah. they are making billions a of, of dollars, money. a ton of money. And, and I, I don't have the statistics on this, but I do know that our prescription drugs are way more expensive here mm -hmm. in the U.S. than yes. they are in other countries. And that that's also a fact, I'll, although I'm not, I mean, I don't have that backed up right now, but I do know that that is a fact. Yeah. So well, it's kind of interesting too, because I feel like, um, you know, when you ask someone just casually like, oh, what's your job? What do you do? Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, anytime someone says, oh, I'm in pharmaceutical sales or oh. I'm in medical sales, mm -hmm. it's like in the back of your head, you immediately know, oh, Mm -hmm. They probably make a lot of money. They do. Which is... They do. They make bank. Kind of... They do. There was a really cute... Sad. <laughs> there was a really you know. sweet movie years ago, Love, Drugs, and Other Things. It was uh, Jake Gyllen oh, yes. Gyllenhaal and Anne oh, Hathaway. Yeah, I know. Yeah. So yeah. she actually had Parkinson's mm -hmm. at, a, at a very young age, but mm -hmm. he was a pharmaceutical sales rep. Oh. Yeah. And he was kind of a sleaze bag. Okay. But yeah. Kind of changed his his life. But um and not that he was a sleaze bag because he was in pharmaceutical sales, but he was a pharma pharmaceutical sales rep. Yeah. So, I mean, there's mm. been a ton of shows. I mean, I think I don't know if it's called Overdose or there was one that just came out and it was on um, you know, Oxycontin and all of that. And mm. I mean, mm -hmm. I feel like it's just been mm -hmm. a big you know, point of topic right now. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. Well, the, the op opioid crisis, oh. I mean, has just been mm -hmm. obviously a huge problem for what are we going on almost two decades now. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So it's th that kind of over prescribing, I think is one thing, mm -hmm. but then I think like what we're kind of, maybe we'll leave the op opioid crisis aside. Cause that is a whole other, that's a whole other, yes. whole other yeah. thing. But if we're talking about like Beth, your statistic and your your research on uh, the not only the amount of money that Americans are spending on 
prescription drugs, but what are those drugs actually for? Right. And so, Mm -hmm. um, according to the national, the NIH, the national Institute of health, um, the most common prescriptions are for things like high cholesterol, high blood pressure and diabetes. Mm -hmm. These are American problems Mm -hmm. that we have here way in way higher numbers than other countries around the world. So, um, I don't know, maybe we can talk a little bit about, about that and like how, how these drugs that are being prescribed that people are spending hard earned money on are four things that could be fixed with other avenues, mm-hmm. right? So yeah. not being dependent and paying money for mm-hmm. prescription drugs, but maybe changing diet and things like that. Mm-hmm. I know you're a big proponent of diet being a, a, a cure for not only those three issues, but also, you know, mood and, you know, mm-hmm. uh, you know, certain, um, or like we were talking about eczema and different um, autoimmune diseases, autoimmune diseases, yes. right? That can be fixed with diet. Yes, which is, yes, if the anti-inflammatory or the, um, we, we, there are so many natural remedies to Mm -hmm. an anti-inflammatory disease such as eczema or psoriasis, or, I mean, we can fill in the blank. Um, but I will just say, so, and, and we did just briefly talk about this. Listen, there are so many diseases that you do need medication for. We are not here to say yay or nay, on anything, because this is where you do need a a medical doctor in your life. But I also encourage everyone to take a deep dive on your own, because our medical community, they were not trained to get to the root of a problem, they were trained to treat a problem. And many times that is just prescribe Mm -hmm. medication. And so I'll just share, just, I'll I'll try to share briefly, but six years ago, I really just started a health journey on my own. I mean, I never really had a weight problem. I mean, I was always like pretty much in optimal health my whole life. I mean, I worked out, I mean, I did like all the things, although I have to say that my diet was a very typical American diet. And we've had conversations many times. I mean, I go back and I am just horrified, horrified with what I fed my children when they were growing mm. up. Pop-Tarts. We, we always had Pop-Tarts and Eggos. We had a lot typical of processed. Typical 90s child typical, diet. Oh my mm. gosh. I mean, if I could change anything, it would be that. And then, and also because Andrew had terrible allergies growing up and a lot of it could have been, and I was kind of onto something. I mean, that's when I was really searching and seeking a lot of things, but there wasn't a lot of information during the nineties and, and even the early aughts. It's really only been in the, in the past, like 10, 15 years, because we've made so many discoveries like mm-hmm. our microbiome, right? which is a whole community that lives inside us that we didn't even know existed until like 15 years ago. Yeah. They did not talk about that. No, which we is wild. Right. I, mean, I grew up my whole life with gut issues. Yes. And yes. not one person ever told me that, oh, have you tried taking a probiotic? No. <laughs> well, because we didn't know. We didn't know. That- I know, but not even one doctor, which is just kind of yeah. crazy. It's like, oh, well, you but, know. But there again, I mean, to yeah. their, you know, to their defense, and I'm not here to defend them, but but they did not have that knowledge yeah. when like uh a doctor that's 65, he did not go to medical school learning any of those things. And, mm-hmm. and also yeah. they are not, they're not holistic doctors. They're not, I mean, now there's different terms. There's like functional medicine, which mm-hmm. really gets to, you know, to the bottom, to the root problem of your disease. So anyway, but I'll, I'll just back up. So we're not here to say yay or nay, because listen, I've had my knee replaced. I mean, I've been in the hospital. I want all the drugs when I need them, right? Mm -hmm. But I'm also the one that wants to get off as quickly as possible because because I do know like even anesthesia will completely wreck your microbiome. I mean, it's just like dropping an atomic bomb. So you, you, once you understand how your body is working, how beautifully it's made, and then the things that we can do to support it, Mm -hmm. which is diet. I'm a big proponent of that. And, and it really has been in the past six years because when my late husband was diagnosed with cancer and it was just a very stressful time um, in my life and stress opens up actually a big doorway to disease. Mm-hmm. And I had, I mean, they really thought they were going to have to put me on these really heavy drugs for rheumatoid arthritis. And that that's the only thing that they could figure out because I had, my body was just inflamed with, I mean, 
it was just like off the charts because we went to a rheumatologist and uh, I mean, I was having problems with um, the first symptom was I'll never forget because we were going off to a campaign in Florida and I just got out of the shower and one of my ankles had like doubled in size since I stepped into the shower. And I'm like, what is going on here? And I, I was like, did I, did I hit it in the middle of the night? Is this, you know, did I not remember this? I mean, it was like kind of running through the scenario. So anyway, but it was just that one incident. So then I went to the orthopedist and then he, and then they did a lot of x-rays. They did they couldn't come up with anything. So then we went to a rheumatologist and they did some tests on me and my, uh, my charts were just, uh, or my blood work was off the charts with inflammation. Oh. So, and that was at a time it was just like, and I can just remember just praying. I'm like, Oh dear Lord, you know, I have to be taking care of Mac. I mean, I can't be sick. Mm -hmm. I have to be taking care of, of Mac. I can't be the one that needs to be taken care of. So that was really the, the beginning of my journey was that incident. And it just really opened my eyes. I mean, the more I learned, the more I read, the more, you know, I mean, now there are many podcasts that you can tune into. There's much more information than even six years ago. Mm -hmm. But it was clear to me that it was my diet and that I needed to change and I needed to change things very, very quickly. And and, and also, too, I mean, I'll give a plug. Uh, and I, I talk about fast rate of fat loss um, on numerous occasions. But that was actually a program that really also opened up my eyes because it was mm -hmm. like, oh, they're talking about balancing your macros. So you need this much protein every day. You need this much, you know, uh, carbs every day. You need, the, you know, this much um fats every day. So, and balancing that. So anyway, so th through all of it, I mean, I can tell you, I went back to the rheumatologist like uh, six months after I started taking a deep dive into my diet and everything had cleared up. Yeah. Kind of interesting. Yeah. So wow. all those big pharmaceutical prescriptions that they wanted to prescribe that would have been, you know, hundreds of dollars every month. Right. Um, I did. I didn't need, and that was just because I changed my diet. So and also I, you're just not reliant. On I drugs. do know that your diet is everything. Mm -hmm. Well, I think too. Um, speaking to diet, but also you kind of talked about this a little bit, and because I have an autoimmune condition mm -hmm. that I still have, and I um, I see a holistic doctor about, but um, it is definitely diet mm -hmm. because I definitely notice that it bothers me more mm -hmm. when I drink you know, a lot of alcohol or I mm -hmm. eat poorly. Mm -hmm. However, what I'm, um, kind of finding now that we've kind of gotten to the point where, you know, we've taken a look at, okay, what bacterial fungal virus myotoxin, like all of these things, like, okay, that's cleared from me. Right. Mm -hmm. Cause it could be a multitude of things that you've picked up over your lifetime. Mm -hmm. diet plays a role, mm -hmm. but now we're kind of leaning a little bit more into what traumatic event has happened oh. in your lifetime mm -hmm. that has caused some sort of stress mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and stress mm -hmm. can cause inflammation, which you had Huge. mentioned yes. at the time that you were going through this, Mac was obviously mm -hmm. diagnosed with cancer and you were kind of like trying to navigate that. Um, and that's what I'm finding now with mine is that, um, it's actually a combination of diet and, um, past events that have happened to me that have, and it, there's something, so, um, there's a book and I don't know who we can look it up, but who wrote it, but it's called body keeps the score. Oh my gosh. What a great book. And I've never read it before, but essentially great. my, um, mm -hmm. my holistic doctor, some does something called, um, NET and it's mm -hmm. called net emotional response testing. And basically it's this idea that your body, um, your organs hold emotions. Mm -hmm. So your liver holds certain emotions, your stomach, your heart, all of these like key organs in your body. Well, if you have these emotions that you never release mm -hmm. from those organs, it can eventually cause disease, mm -hmm. which can lead to cancer, autoimmune mm -hmm. conditions, all of these things mm -hmm. that even if you fix your diet, if you don't actually fix the traumatic or the emotional distress that you've caused to your heart, mm -hmm. then you, it, you still harbor that. 
Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Which doesn't ultimately mm-hmm. cure itself. Mm-hmm. It's very interesting. It's kind of one of those things that sounds like a hoo ha, like sort of like yeah, woo you know, woo. <laughs> I know, but, but um, he's done it to me before, and it's kind of wild because I walk out of there and um, and I'm like wow, like I didn't know that that kind of bothered me. And then he'll tell you, he'll go, okay, well, the rest of the day, you're probably going to feel kind of heavy, Mm -hmm. you know, like there's like this like weight that like, and he's right. You kind of drive home and you feel this like heaviness, like in your heart, but you like, like in your chest and you don't Mm -hmm. know why. Yeah. And then the next day you wake up and you're kind of like, oh, Mm -hmm. there's this level of release. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But that reminds me of um, Rolfing, which is a deep tissue oh, yeah. massage series. Yeah. Um, and I remember when I did that, there were certain parts of my body that were just holding on to so much mm-hmm. stress or trauma or whatever that when he really got in there and dug into those aspects or, you know, aspects in, into those muscles, it brought yeah. up mm-hmm. a lot of emotions and mm-hmm. kind of, yeah. you know, was a, a really tremendous release, even though I hadn't realized I needed to release anything. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah, I can I can see how, you know, the body, yeah. body keeps the score. It does. And our, our bodies can become misaligned. Mm-hmm. So it can be structurally misaligned, which then puts a mm-hmm. lot of pressure on yep. right. different areas of I mean compensating for the whole that old um what was it like a nursery rhyme you know the leg bones connected to the thigh <laughs> bone. but it's really really true because yeah. I mean it's all connected and it's all you know put together as I said beautifully I mean these these bodies of ours are amazing both yeah. inside and outside and one one thing can go wrong and just like with rolfing because I just remember I did rolfing after I had my knee replacement because uh, about a year or so after the surgery we could still tell in in Pilates my um, Pilates instructor Allie was always you know coaching me and sharing different things but we could still see that my gait was off. Mm. There was just, you know, it mm-hmm. just had not come back to where it needed to be. Yeah. And so I went to Rolfing and sure enough, yeah. I mean, there was like one session and I was like, it was like so painful, but so <laughs> uplifting at the same time yeah. because she, we finally got, yeah. you know, we got my body back in yeah. line the way that it needed to be. But it was like, uh, like a hallelujah moment yeah. when that happened. So, well, yeah. that's what those sessions can like feel like, even mm-hmm. like the NET sessions that he does, um, because he's done a few with me where he'll release like quite a few emotions mm-hmm. at once. And then he'll kind of test me and he'll be like, okay, let's just like test to like verify that if we can even do anymore. And there's been times where he's testing. He's like, your body is like done. In, <laughs> yeah. Your body's essentially done. Like you're in, yeah. it's going haywire right now. And I can feel it because the last time I did it with him, um, then he went to adjust me. Um, he does like chiropractic work Mm -hmm. and applied kinesiology and all of that. And he went to adjust me and I looked at him and I said, I was like shaking, Mm -hmm. like I was physically shaking. Mm -hmm. And he was like, are you all right? And I'm like, I don't know. I'm like, my whole body is shaking, Mm -hmm. but it was because we had released so many past, Mm -hmm. um, traumas that had happened to me Right. Mm -hmm. that specifically are relating to my current autoimmune Mm -hmm. issue that I have. Mm -hmm. So, Mm -hmm. but yeah, it's just so interesting. Yeah. So now let me, uh, I'll switch gears just a little bit because I'm just going back to the America being Mm over-medicated and just the statistic that I shared that 65 year olds were taking four prescriptions or more a month, which is. That's the average. Yeah, that's the average. Some, some are taking more and some are taking less, but I will just share, I take 0.0 prescription drugs. And, you know, knock on wood and I'll knock on my head too. Um, Yeah. But that's because I have radically changed my diet, my outlook on life. Well, Mm -hmm. I can't can't say that my outlook on life has changed, but I mean, I did go through a a trauma when I lost Mac and that was a challenge to work through, but I was determined to work through that Mm -hmm. and come out on the other side. And so I do know that having done that, my life, I guess, I mean, I'm looking forward right. and, and not behind. So mm-hmm. I know that that's, that's, a, big thing, that's yeah. a big thing. And it really is. And I know that people, I mean, if you have lost a loved one, grief is one of the most traumatic things mm-hmm. that you're going to be faced with, but there is hope and you can 
work through it. There's no magic. I mean, hello, I'm going to put in air quotes. There's no magic pill. I mean, there's not. I mean, you can medicate yourself. I mean, you can, if you're having trouble sleeping or, or whatnot, I just didn't want to do those things. Mm-hmm. I just wanted to do it in a natural way. But um, my diet has been so cleaned up. I'm a big proponent of exercise. We need to be moving these yeah. bodies of ours because honestly, if you uh, don't move it, you're going to lose it. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And and I will just share with any 65-year-old or any 60-year-old, uh, I mean, fill in the blank with your age, it is never too late. It's never too late yeah. to start moving, to start an exercise mm-hmm. program, to clean up your diet. And then also, I'm a big proponent. I do have at least a dozen supplements in my medicine cabinet. Mm-hmm. So, you know, so whether that's fish I'm like oil. I'm year old woman in my <laughs> supplement drawer. <laughs> you you want to, I have a whole closet. <laughs> fish oil. I mean, uh, vitamin D, B12, probiotics. I'm a very big proponent of supplements. Mm-hmm. And I do share this from time to time on my mm-hmm. social media ch- uh, channels. And I do know a lot of people like poo poo it and, and, and it's like totally fine. I'm not here to convince anybody. I mean, this is not a sponsored podcast. I don't have any, you know, skin we're, in we're it. We're not selling uh, supplements. But, I, but boy, I do. Well, it it any, works for you. It does. It works for me yeah. and I'm a big proponent of it. So, and I know, uh, I mean, actually Andrew is completely changed Andrew, his life in the past year or so he's oh like, yeah we both mm-hmm. i mean his supplement drawer might be more than mine to I be think honest. So. it's like <laughs> insane but um yeah we both just take supplements i mean we don't do any kind of mm-hmm. and this is coming from someone that so i grew up like it, i wouldn't say that i was like heavily medicated as a child like but i did grow up medicated in a sense because, um, I had asthma as a Mm -hmm. kid Mm -hmm. and looking back and even my mom will agree with this. I actually don't think I had asthma. I think I was misdiagnosed with asthma. I think I had anxiety Mm -hmm. and I don't Mm -hmm. think anyone ever recognized that, but, um, it would be like, anytime I got anxious, that's when I felt like I couldn't breathe. Mm -hmm. Right. And I didn't know how to calm myself down as a child. And so then, you know, my mom took me to the doctor and it's like, well, she's having trouble breathing. Oh, well, she has asthma. Oh, well, we're going to put her on singular. And Mm -hmm. I was on singular probably since the age of 10 until I was 20 to the point where they were like, I don't even know if this is working Mm -hmm. anymore because you've been on it for so long. Mm -hmm. Then you go back and look up singular as a whole. And it had like a whole slew of statistics and um, research that was done on it later on, um, that it caused massive depression in people. Mm-hmm. It never did in me. Like I never mm-hmm. felt that, but, um, mm-hmm. there were higher suicide rates mm-hmm. with people that were on singular. I never felt like that, but, um, but with a lot of people there were, um, mm-hmm. I did albuterol inhalers a lot, mm-hmm. a lot of breathing treatments when I went to hospitals because of my asthma, but I think it was just anxiety. Yeah. I think I had massive anxiety and I don't think I knew how to calm myself. And then once I finally got to like my like late twenties, I have not taken any kind of asthma medications Mm -hmm. in the past, probably eight years. Mm -hmm. Haven't done an inhaler, haven't had a breathing treatment. So it changed since then. So is that when you realized that you had anxiety and you started to take steps to, I think so. Yeah. Deal with the anxiety. Deal with that. Uh Uh-huh. I think it changed with that. And then um, with my autoimmune condition, I kind of reached a point where um, I went to one, I had like one moment where I went to a doctor and she basically looked at me and she said, "Um, you're going to have to be on this really highly potent steroid cream Mm -hmm. for the rest of your life to fix this autoimmune condition. Mm -hmm. And I was like 26 or 27. And she said, and I looked at her, I go, how does that work if I want to have kids? And she looked back at me and this was my OBGYN. And she goes, oh, you're probably never going to have children. Wow. And as like a 27 year old, I don't know if you can like imagine like me sitting there by myself in a room and this doctor saying, oh, that's probably not possible for you. Mm -hmm. And I walked out of the office I literally took the prescription in my hand. I walked out of the office and I threw it in the trash can Mm -hmm. and I just walked out. I didn't Mm -hmm. get it. I never got it filled, never did any of that. Mm -hmm. And then about a month later, I got shingles and I went back to the doctor and I was having a lot of nerve pain from the shingles, maybe like three months after that. Mm -hmm. Same thing happened. I was in the room for two minutes. She said, here's a nerve blocking Mm -hmm. pill. Walked out. I was like, I'm not getting this filled. 
that's when I started seeing my holistic doctor mm-hmm. and it was kind of mind blowing. Started to take a deep dive into why. Started to take a deep dive into right. why. And, and, and yeah. Instead of like just fixing it. And, and, yep. and that's why I said, I mean, our medical community, they are definitely trained just to fix the problem. So you're either going to have to have surgery, you're going to yep. have to have a prescription. They're never interested into like when I had to have my knee replaced and that honestly, that was in direct a uh, conjunction with the stress that was that had entered into my life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it was. I mean, and I was just bone on bone, like a year and a half Ugh. after my first, you know, my first symptoms yeah. of you know rheumatoid arthritis and all of that. But they weren't interested at all. And you know, oh gosh, why? Why are like, you? What are you going yeah. through yes. right now? How, What's what, happening in your life? Yes, because just replacing we had X-rays yeah. from eighteen months ago, and you're perfectly fine. That yeah. knee was perfectly fine because actually, I do have a bad knee. I had an injury in college mm-hmm. uh, playing powder puff uh, football, <laughs> and I had to have uh, an a what ALC re, uh, fix. So that knee was the skeptical one, but my mm-hmm. good knee, which was perfectly fine, eighteen months before I had surgery. I mean, that's pretty drastic. But nobody yeah. was like, "Oh, well, you know, why did this happen?" But I knew because yeah. I was already on my journey. You already, yeah. I was already understanding that I'm not necessarily going to find the answers, the root cause of things from my medical community, but I, right. well, and I'm that's... going to find it on my own. And there is, and that's one of the things I do love about like podcasts yeah. and, and the, the, you know, the 21st century, because there is quite a lot of information. Yes, that is true. And a lot of information had been suppressed for years mm-hmm. from not only big pharma, but from our, of food sources. Well, I think too, and I don't, and you've obviously been in the situation with the whole rheumatoid arthritis Mm -hmm. and the knee replacement. I've been in the situation. I don't know if you have Kelly, but it gets to a point in time where, and I've, I tell everyone about my holistic doctor. Mm -hmm. I am like his biggest cheerleader advocate. He has truly changed my life. And it's fine if, you know, Mm -hmm. even Andrew is like skeptical of him and that's fine. Mm -hmm. But I tell Andrew, I'm like, this is like my form of therapy. And if I feel like it's working for me and it is, then it is. Mm -hmm. But um, I have so many people at Pure Bar come up to me and they're like, oh, this is wrong. This is wrong. And I say, oh, go to my holistic doctor. Five months will go by Mm -hmm. and they won't listen to me. And then they'll finally come back and they'll go, what's the name of your holistic doctor? Mm -hmm. And I find that you reach a point Mm -hmm. in time Mm -hmm. where you go, I've had enough yep. yeah, and I've had enough of these doctors telling me this, that I need this prescription. Mm-hmm. I'm done. Mm-hmm. Let me find alternate mm-hmm. avenues. And that's what happened to me. And that's mm-hmm. obviously what happened to you where yes. you're like, I've had enough. That's right. You and know, I know there's an answer out there yeah. and I, and I will find it. I yeah. will, I will be that dogmatic person to find it. But the cool thing is that there are more and more doctors coming out and yeah. understanding yeah. how the medical system is broken right. and there's more and more you'll you'll see them over on youtube or you'll see that they've written a book where they you know a, a cardiologist a well-known cardiologist will come out and say okay yes yep. diet mm-hmm. so important mm-hmm. um exercise or right yeah. or like for for years like also you know when i was growing up the we were always told to eat less exercise more so right. eating less i mean it wasn't like okay, um, eat less potato chips and more broccoli. No, it was just like eat less. You just need, you know, so, so, so me, it's like, okay, well I can have one chocolate chip cookie, you know, with those calories. I was still making the wrong choices and, right. and, and putting too much sugar. So now we can maybe segue over to sugar because mm. yeah, in conjunction with diet, how much sugar the United States consumes without even realizing it startling. Yeah. So, so much of it is hidden sugar and white bread. Right. I know. Yeah. So you really have, again, you have to be your own self advocate and educate yourself, but you really have to start reading those labels because sugar is the number one killer. Yeah, it is. And we just don't even realize that we're eating it on a day-to-day basis. Yeah. So until you really do start to clean up your diet and see where those hidden sugars are. Yeah. The hidden sugar. Mm -hmm. Yeah. My dad, um, a few years ago was, um, diagnosed like Mm pre-diabetic and he's been retired now for gosh, a very long time. It's been probably 15 years or something. Um, 
and he doesn't have a super active lifestyle. And so I was really worried when he got this diagnosis because I was like, oh no, you know, he's going to be on medication. Like it's just going to be, you know, this slow march, you know, down the diabetic road. And um, his doctors, you know, said before we you're pre-diabetic. So you've got time to turn things around for yourself. You know, Mm -hmm. it's like this reprieve. Mm -hmm. Right. And he really took it to heart and completely changed his diet. I mean, and I never really thought my dad could do it because I I feel like my dad is of the, of the generation of men who's kind of like, I'm, you know, stoic and I'm, you know, I'm not gonna, you know, whatever. You're not going to tell me what Yeah. And they're kind of set in their ways, you know? Um, Mm -hmm. but my dad really impressed me and really, I was so proud of him because, um, and I can't remember how many months it was of diet change that it took for him. Mm-hmm. Probably they tested him again at six months and then eight months it's and something. A while. But it's he, not going to happen overnight. No, of course not. But it is amazing how quickly it can start to reverse mm-hmm. if you're committed to it and you yes. stick with it and you do it. Because yes. it didn't take all of that long before he the the diagnosis was reversed. He's totally fine. He still, you know, manages to like yeah. watch what he eats and takes care of all of that, but he doesn't have to be as like, he can allow himself to have a chocolate chip cookie or right. something like that. Yeah, but he right. can. Yes. But it was amazing. Like the, the transformation was really amazing. And I was so, so proud yeah. of him for being, you know, a 70 year old man mm-hmm. to like, <laughs> to actually do it. You know, I was really, really proud of him, mm-hmm. but it, it just kind of goes to show too, that even the most stubborn, people with given the right information you can change and the right you know or and enough um direction direction but also like will to to just not surrender to just being on a Mm -hmm. on a drug that's going to solve the problem for you for because you know i think a lot of people in that age range 70s 80s i think there's a a fair number of them and this is probably what we see when we see Mm -hmm. these prescription stats but like that they're just kind of resigned like you know what i'm I'm yeah. 75, I'm 78, mm-hmm. you know, I'm 80. Like, mm-hmm. I don't really, it's too hard to change. I'm just going to go ahead and take this medication and da da da. Well, and I think but, too, it's like there's, they put a lot of trust in the doctor that's giving them right. the prescription. Yes. And I think, I mean, if I would go back in time when I was 26 or 27 at that one doctor that was prescribing that really highly potent steroid cream, mm-hmm. um, and I would have trusted her with that, it's mm-hmm. like, um, she probably was right. There probably at that point in time would not have been a possibility for me to have children because you can't rub highly potent steroid creams on your body and expect a good outcome mm-hmm. from yeah. that. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But I also didn't trust her. I was mm-hmm. like, I trust that you're telling me that I have an autoimmune and that this is the autoimmune mm-hmm. autoimmune condition. Mm-hmm. I do trust that because you tested for that and the test result came back positive. But there are other options mm-hmm. and it's really amazing. Like you said, how your dad's body fully reversed itself. Our bodies are amazing. Are. I mean, think of women that have children, like, mm-hmm. you know, Oh, I know what happens in nine months. With yeah. Your body and it's like your body, <laughs> like feeding, is able to do that and, and feeding and housing another human. Exactly. It's, it's, it's amazing. Yeah. Well, and also too, going back to just the prescriptions and when I'm watching television and there are quite a few commercials that are pharmaceutical related, but Yes. When you they because they always have to give the disclaimer mm-hmm. and, and when they like aisle long I know so terrible it's like and I'm like death 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 and death right <laughs> that's a horrifying and it's actually frightening when they go through all of the side effects it is and it's and it's something to really yes. pay attention to and think about too I actually yes. um I knew a woman uh, many years ago who had uh, rheumatoid arthritis and it was so bad she had had it her whole life. And she was on this medication where the side effect was breast cancer. Mm -hmm. What happened? She got breast cancer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So now she had this rheumatoid arthritis and Mm -hmm. breast cancer. Mm -hmm. And she was only in, I think at the time she might've been in her like mid to late Mm thirties. So, and she had a kid, like, Mm -hmm. I mean, and she was a single mom. Like it was, it was really, really incredibly horrible. Like you're taking this medication and then you get this other horrible disease that no one ever wishes to get. And yeah, Yeah. the, the, the litany of, of side effects. Yes. It's just, it's, I remember when I was, um, a teenager, cause there was a period I think I might've been like a freshman in high school, but I like had really bad acne that just like all of a sudden started. And my mom took me to the dermatologist and luckily, luckily my mom was pretty, um, like 
she was kind of like you in the sense of I still like obviously had ego waffles, but, Mm -hmm. and I still, you know, had medicine for the asthma that we Mm -hmm. thought I had, um, because we thought it was necessary, Mm -hmm. but she also was a little skeptical of Mm -hmm. certain things, which I'm glad she was because the dermatologist right away was like, well, why don't we put her on Accutane? And then he went through the whole list of, you know, side side effects. effects. And, and here's the thing is I, I know people personally that have been on Accutane and, my acne was not nearly as bad as some of the people that I know that have had acne and have had to go on it. So if you've had to go on Accutane, like I'm not saying one way right. is correct or the other. Right. Um, but my mom was like, what are the side effects of this? And obviously, so side effects, it's like you have to be on like birth control. You have to get, even as like a freshman in high school, it's like you have to be on birth control. You have to get um, blood tests done like every three months, I want to say. Wow. Um, a side effect is death, like oh legitimately gosh. death, um, because basically it just dries you out from the inside out. Wow. And the reason you have to get blood tests done is because they basically have to check that you're not pregnant because it causes serious birth defects if mm. you were to get pregnant. Wow. Um, while being on this. Oh. So that's why even as like a freshman, I mean, I wasn't doing anything as a freshman in high school Mm -hmm. that would even remotely cause me to get pregnant. But even though I wasn't, they're like, no, you have to be on birth control um, because they're that, you know, strict about it because that's how bad the side effects effects are. are, I would imagine like your kidneys and liver would go through the ringer with that kind of medication too. Like your whole, basically it dries everything out from the inside and then Like, I think people that have been on it, they say their lips crack really bad. Everything just, I mean, I never went on it because my mom was like, Mm -hmm. no, we're not doing this. Like, please give us something else. Yeah. Something a little bit more topical or mild, you know? Yeah. But. Well, and also too, you know, just going back to uh, the average 65 year old has four medications. So one medication side effects can, like you were just sharing with your, your friend that was on rheumatoid arthritis medication. Mm-hmm. So th- that side effect is breast cancer. I mean, that's what happens. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, this, this medication is going to cause this. So then they, so then they slap that medication, mm-hmm. you know, to solve that problem. And then another this one, medic- to solve right. That one yeah. And then it's an on. Yes. Well, and that's really when you see people that, like you said, the average being, mm-hmm four over 65. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think that there's, it wouldn't shock me if like, there's a lot of people maybe like you that just don't take medication. Right. And then there's a lot of people that have multiple medications because like six or eight. Mm-hmm. Well, because like, well, I have to take this for blood pressure, but this medication causes this. So then I have to take this and this causes this. And it's like an ongoing right. kind of mm-hmm. counter you know, like domino effect, right. you know, yeah. right. And, yeah. and then too, just going back to big pharma and we do call them that for a reason, because these companies are making billions of dollars. Actually, yes. here, here's another mm-hmm. statistic from 2018, um, that prescription drug expenditures hit $335 billion. Yeah. That's crazy. And honestly, okay. that's, makes me mad. That's right? what makes mad. me mad. Yeah. Yeah. I really, really, uh, right. Like that's what infuriates me about they uh, are medicine. And it's, so here's, so this is interesting because there's a new drug on the streets called Ozempic that oh, was yeah. originally, uh, for diabetes. For right? Diabetes. That, right. So it's really, it's a, it's a great drug. If you have diabetes, it really comes along and, um, you know, really, and, and diabetes can be a very dangerous disease. Mm-hmm. I mean, so whether that's juvenile diabetes that you were born with or adult onset diabetes that your father was able to prevent, but mm-hmm. this is a disease. It's a killer. It yeah. really is. And you do have to take it seriously. So Ozempic was created for that, but then they also realized that it could be a weight loss drug. And now so many people are using it as that. And okay. So, and maybe Kelly, you can look up what the obesity, um, percentage is in America, how many people are obese in America? Because there again, that could be a great medication to help you if you are severely overweight, but now they're, I mean, the drug hasn't been out for very long, but now they're also seeing that, okay, if, if you're taking it for weight loss, then not only are you going to lose weight, but you're going to lose muscle mass. And we need our muscle mass. That's what I've seen. Because that's... Um, well, I think they call it like Ozempic face or something. They're saying like oh, the do people they? that take it, I guess, 
basically like say I were to be overweight and like decide to take Ozempic mm -hmm. and I'm, you know, 34. I think they're seeing a lot of like younger people. Like if I took it and then lost a lot of weight, mm -hmm. I would, that would basically result in my face being almost like saggy and like more wrinkled, oh, yeah. like mm -hmm. more wrinkled than it would right. Yes, for a normal 34. Yes. Level. Because you lose 50% of your muscle yeah. mass. I mean, muscle mass is what we need. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so so to offset the, the there again, the side effects for Ozempic, if you're taking it for weight loss, you're going to have to, I mean, A, you're going to have to take a look at your diet yeah, and change your diet and then really amp up your protein because you need protein, you know, to keep your Make muscle mass. mass. And exercise. Right. Which and, is and all right. and then you, things that would help you exactly, lose to begin with. Exactly. So well, I think the other thing that's really disturbing about this Ozempic for weight loss thing is that... Um, people have to take it for the rest of their lives. They do. To maintain that. They do. And this so is not, it's not a quick fix. And it, it, but it's it not, gives you quick results, but yeah. mm -hmm. though to maintain those results, you have to stay on that drug. Right. And that, can you yeah. imagine being yes. in your 20s or even in your drug. 30s? It's and, not a cheap drug. Yeah, I can't even imagine. At all. It's really not. So, but anyway, what is the, the obesity um, statistic for at the U.S.? U.S. obesity prevalence was 41.9% in 2017 to March 2020. Okay, so so forty one percent of our society is obese. I thought it was higher. Uh, prevalence increased from thirty point five percent to forty one point nine percent. Let's see a closer look. Um, sixty nine percent. I was going to say. However, I, that's overweight or obese. So they're not. This particular statistic from Harvard is okay. not listing out. We'd have to dig into it a little bit more to get the specifics of obesity versus overweight. Okay. Um, okay. But. But we all know that these these numbers vary amongst uh, demographic groups, mm -hmm. right? We we do know that lower income mm -hmm. um, communities are at higher risk yes. for a lot of these things because of food deserts and things like that, right. which is also heartbreaking too. Because, yeah, and they're also not they're not educated to choose the the, the proper food. Well, when, I don't when even. When it's not even growing. right. Yeah, if you're in a food desert. Yes, and, yeah. and and that's a whole nother. Well, I mean, it's like a whole nother all that's podcast available is that. like yes. McDonald's. And what is it? McDonald's is cheap. You right. know what and I mean? It's not McDonald's. Yeah. It's because that's not even that cheap anymore. But well, we're talking true. about like, Nothing you is. know, the corner gas station mm -hmm. or something like well, this. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. um, it's a horrible problem that I can't believe is still such an issue in America. It's one mm -hmm. of the things that makes me really angry about how this country has managed to. Yes deal with its population like just in in general like i think we have a you know we have a lot of a lot of things we could be doing a lot better in america given that we're the what richest country in the yes. world i think too if you coincide um how expensive like organic produce or actually yes. getting good food is to right. um big pharma mm -hmm. and what they're actually making mm -hmm. i mean ultimately mm -hmm. like i don't know i'm just the two coincide together, and I feel like mm -hmm. it's like, do they want you to be healthy? No, I, know. Like, I don't. I, hate to I think say that but I know. It's kind of like I know they make it really pricey uh -huh. for a reason, a reason, mm -hmm. and only certain you know groups of people can afford those mm -hmm. types of food. I mean, even sometimes I go to the grocery store and mm -hmm. I'm like, you look at the produce, and I'm like. Mm -hmm my God, can I afford this organic, you know, lettuce or strawberries? I'm like, this is expensive. Right. Yeah. You know, and this yeah. is a modern society problem because if we just go back to the early 20th century, 19th century, when we, when we were an agrarian mm -hmm. world, an agrarian society, we did not have these issues right. yeah. because we were all, farming we were yeah. all cultivating our own yeah. crops we were mm -hmm. all you know we had we raised our pigs and our chickens and and so we didn't have um the haves and the have nots yeah. it's only after we became an industrial society and then we you know we started you know then the the automobile came into play and we started you know pushing everybody out to the suburbs because we want everybody to have a car yeah. and buy the gas and then buy oh the gas. then how are we going to mm -hmm. feed them oh well w let's create supermarkets and then it was yeah. like because and and this is what I do love about Europe and other uh, parts of the world is that they still have a society where they typically go shopping for their groceries every day. Yeah, exactly. They, they have the supermarket mm -hmm. and stock. You know, when I was you know raising the boys, yeah. oh well, you know I'd go shopping for the whole week. 
yeah. rather than go and pick fresh produce every day. Every yeah. day. And we, we've so we've so removed ourselves of that, especially in the United States. Mm-hmm. And, but then if we start to trace, if we're, if we're going to go back to the root problem, it is we did not have these diseases 150 years ago. Yeah, we, we didn't. Yeah. I mean, um, well, we so, also probably weren't putting as much pesticides and mm-hmm. all of that on, mm-hmm. you know, what's happening with our food yes. today too. So that's, that's right. So I really do think it's, uh, on us to become educated as much as we can to just be aware of how important our diet is mm-hmm. and how, I mean, and I think most people don't even un- know or understand how shitty they feel on a day-to-day basis based on based on what they're eating on what they're yeah, or like they're eating the clue or like the reason why they just don't feel good mm-hmm. or are tired all the time right. or feeling run down yes or the people um, that i see you know struggling through the grocery store um you know with a limp or i mean and i and i would just as i you know shared with my knee replacement that was you know that was because stress entered into my life you know and it did it impacted my joints and so if you're feeling like you know your joints are not functioning the way that they should then definitely i mean i i'm just very very thankful that i i really did go on a on a health journey yeah. and i'm telling you at 65 i'm going to be 66 this year i feel amazing i feel energetic i feel and and, you know, to your point, Kelly, when your dad changed his diet, it's not mm-hmm. that he doesn't ever have like, you know, a piece of chocolate cake. I mean, right. I, I still enjoy those things. I yeah. just don't do it often. <laughs> right. I just don't do it. I mean, moderation. It yes, in moderation. I, yeah. I don't choose the potato, the, ba- the whole bag of potato chips for, you know, a thousand calories as opposed right. to, you know, a bag of a bag of kale, you know. Well, I think like ultimately, um, like all of this, what you can say just as a whole mm-hmm. is that this is all about being an advocate for yourself Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. and not always taking, like taking everyone's Mm -hmm. opinion with a grain of salt and then being an advocate Mm -hmm. for yourself, finding out what Mm -hmm. works, you know, Mm -hmm. for you. Um, Cause I mean, even I will say, you know, there are a time and a place for doctors. Absolutely. Last year I broke my foot. Absolutely. I can't go to a holistic doctor for my broken bone. You know what I mean? Like that might require surgery. Yes. Like obviously there are a multitude of things that do require and it's a time and a place. Exactly. But I think you have to advocate for yourself. And I think you have to be willing to advocate for yourself because if you're not, then that's when it becomes a problem because Mm -hmm. then you might end up with eight prescriptions. Mm -hmm. You just kind of get bulldozed into, I I think even, even if you love your doctor Mm -hmm. and you're really happy with your healthcare providers, Mm -hmm. I think it is the most important thing for people to advocate for themselves by asking questions. Ask questions. Like don't just let them shuttle you in and shuttle you out of the room and, Mm -hmm. you know, sit there and make them earn Mm -hmm. What you're paying yeah. them because it's not cheap to go well, to the doctor. And if they have, exactly. if they're offended by you asking the questions, then yes. maybe they're not the doctor for you because right. any doctor that is a good doctor, exactly. you should be able to ask them questions without yes. them getting annoyed. Yes. Right. You know? Yeah. I agree. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, and they even recommend to get a second opinion mm-hmm. on many of the diagnoses that we have. And you're and a, and a good qualified doctor will actually tell you, go get another right. opinion, right. you know, to yeah. back up, you know, what they are sharing with right. you. So, because yeah, none of this is cheap here. No, we don't, it's, it's not, we our, don't live in Europe or Canada. Well, I mean, no. it's the same as any person. I, it's the same as with your house, right? Mm-hmm. We just got our HVAC replaced, which mm-hmm. is not cheap. Mm-hmm. We probably had five quotes done mm-hmm. before we did that. Mm-hmm. You should do the same with your body. Exactly. Because ultimately your body is probably a little bit more important than your house. <laughs> it is. <laughs> you know, like you, but it's all about maintenance. <laughs> I know you only get one and it's all about maintenance. All about maintenance. It really yeah. is. Yeah. Just so, just like our, each facts have to be replaced. Like yes. my knee was replaced. <laughs> I mean, there are certain things that come along, but if we are overall doing all the right things and listen, I am, I am very well aware that at any moment, I mean, health is very, very precious. It really is. And that's why I am a big proponent to do everything that I can every day to be as healthy as I possibly can. But I also know that it can be taken away from me at yeah, a moment's at notice a moment's too. Notice. And so that's, that's where we all are. 
um, because I know one thing, and that is, you know, death will come knocking on my door and everyone else's door. It's what death and taxes. Those mm-hmm. are the two things you can't, <laughs> you can't evade. Yeah. But I will do my best, you know, while I'm here to be, to live the healthiest and the most vibrant life possible. And that is, mm-hmm. you know, and so, so far, zero prescriptions, a lot of supplements, and uh, a lot of exercise, yeah. and uh, doing all the good things. Good for so, you. Yeah. so anything else we want to address for over medication? I mean, there's so many more things. I, that we I could do. Talk about. I do think that we can dive more into this topic in other future episodes because mm-hmm. there's a lot of rabbit um, rabbit holes yeah. to go down. There, I think with this, there are because we didn't even really touch on our our youth and the medications mm-hmm. that they are taking right. because. Mm-hmm. That that has skyrocketed too. Yeah, yeah. Especially our yeah. It's not just the older folks no. that are over medicated, no. which is kind of a crazy it's realization. Crazy. Yes, yes. So in the future, we can. Mm-hmm. I mean, as as you said, there are a lot of rabbit holes that we could go down. So we we really holes. just uh, touch the surface of this topic, but right. it is an important one. It is, and it is startling that America is the most medicated country. We're the wealthiest and the most medicated country. Yeah. So probably the most depressed too. Which yes, is. I feel like the priorities are mm-hmm. a little askew. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, that concludes another episode of Message from Mom, where we are busting the myth that mothers-in-law aren't necessarily monsters-in-law. Thanks, ladies. <laughs>